The next one, the final one is the bank. So what we've announced publicly is that we purchased 9.9% .9 stake of a bank. Now we have the option to buy the rest. There are some other partners that are interested in purchasing the bank with us. We're looking for strategic partners. Some of them could be blockchain oriented. Some of them could be financial. Some of them could just be rich people that have connections. Believe it or not, that sometimes helps out. But WEG Bank or this bank specifically is what happens with the integration. You're a merchant, you receive crypto, and you make the power decision if you want to be able to convert in fiat or not. So you would open up a business merchant services account at the bank, and then you'd be able to do that to facilitate your business in crypto. So right now, the current bank actually is a property managed bank. Basically, they just issue loans for associations in Germany and collect some interest. And so eventually, they're going to start switching to what we're doing. So we're going to have just regular checking accounts that's linked to crypto, private label debit cards. So you're going to have your Verge debit card. Then you're going to have... And of course, we're going to have confidential debit cards as well. Right now, we're working and talking to the regulators of how we can actually do that. There is a limitation of how much that amount is, but the goal is that you can go to Verge, get your Verge, get an actual debit card that's anonymous, and you can actually use it for everyday purchases. And of course, a global ATM network. I'm not a guy or, you know, the bank is not going to be one that's going to have a thousand branches. I believe in having partnerships, working with other banks worldwide, and having ATM networks, because that's just a way of speeding things up. But let's be honest, a debit card is old technology. An ATM network is old technology. This is a fact, but you need this right now in order to transition to the future. I believe I've lived in the future. I lived in China eight years. When I went in 2008, everything was cash. Everything was cash. Then after a couple years, it was debit card and credit card. I was like, what's going on? This is like the States. And then within three years, by 2012 or so, WeChat came into play. Do you know how popular WeChat became? Does anybody know the original story of how it happened? Anybody? Nobody? Nobody can raise their hand? Okay, one guy knows. You know? So WeChat became popular because in the Chinese New Year, they went on to a TV station that everybody in the, all of China watches. And they created, they created this game that if you shake your phone, you're going to receive a red envelope, a digital red envelope. And in that red envelope, you receive five cents, 10 cents, whatever it was. And the goal was that the more you shake, the more you received. And then eventually you would have to share that to get more. So instantly they got 50 million or 30 million subscribers in one day. It went from a chat app to a money app to the point where now you cannot survive in China without that app. Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, all those companies are gonna have centralized apps all of them to the point where you can buy anything in china you can get somebody to come wash your dog order food and get a clean lady appointment booked the next day all within the app